Hello and welcome to GSC at Home, bringing you a bit of science every day at 10am. My name is Natalie and today we're going to have a bit of a think about how cameras work. And together we're going to make our very own pinhole camera, just using things that we can find around the house. Cameras are everywhere and nowadays technology is so advanced that most of us carry our own cameras around in our phones. There have been lots of different types of cameras throughout history, but they all work off the same basic principles. What do all cameras need to work? They all need light. Nowadays, most of our cameras use lenses to focus and bend the light, but did you know that the first cameras didn't use lenses at all? These were called camera obscuras, and they worked by having a hole in a wall that the light passed through and projected the image onto the screen in a dark room. In fact, the word camera comes from the word room. Light travels in a straight line, and in a camera obscura, the light travels in a straight line through the hole and forms an upside down image on the opposite wall. There are still camera obscuras operational in Scotland today in Edinburgh and Dumfries. Pinhole cameras are smaller versions of camera obscuras and today we are going to make our very own just from things that we can find around the house. We're going to need some scissors so we will need some adult supervision to help us use these. We're going to need some kind of tube. I've got a toilet roll tube, that's all I've got. But if you've got a kitchen roll tube, that's even better. Or ideally, if you've got a Pringles style can, that would be perfect. We're also gonna need some sellotape, some baking paper, some tin foil, a pin or needle of some kind, some card, a pen, and a ruler. Now, we said that all cameras need light to work, so I think the first thing that we should make is something for the light to enter our camera through. This is called our aperture, and nowadays most apertures for cameras are lenses, like in our phones, but our aperture is going to be our pinhole. Now, we need to think carefully about making our pinhole aperture though, because the smaller the pinhole, the narrower the beam of light that enters into the camera, which is going to make our image crisper and sharper. But a narrower beam of light also means less light, which will make our image dimmer. So we need to have a balance where our pinhole is big enough so that our image is bright enough, but small enough that our image is sharp. Usually they fix this in the first cameras by taking their photos over a really long time to let enough light in. So if you wanted your photo taken a long time ago, you'd have to sit there for a really long time. And that's why people can sometimes look grumpy in old photos. How long do you think that you could hold a smile for? Our pinhole, we're going to make by using a needle, or I'm going to use a thumbtack, and some tin foil. If you are using a Pringles style tube, you can use the metal end of the Pringles style tube instead of the tin foil. And we're going to poke a hole into our tin foil just here. Now, we don't want to go straight in and make it a really rough hole because if we have a rough pinhole, then the light will scatter off it and that won't be very good. We need it to be really nice and smooth to have the best quality image. So the way that we're going to do that is I have some card just here and I'm going to sandwich my tin foil in my card and we're going to use our pin to gently rotate it into the tin foil. The slower and the more delicate that you can make this, the smoother your pinhole and the better the quality of your image is going to be. There are other things we want to think about when making our camera as well. How much of our scene do we want to see? This is called our field of view. And the bigger the field of view, the more of the scene that you get to see. The smaller the field of view, the less you see. The field of view is determined by the distance between our aperture, our pinhole, and our screen that we project our image onto. This distance is called the focal length. And the smaller the focal length, the bigger your field of view. This is how cameras zoom in and out. They change their focal length. To determine our focal length, we are going to take our tube and we're going to cut it into two with one smaller piece and one bigger piece. And the distance of the smaller piece here is going to be our focal length. So I'm going to choose a distance for my focal length. And I'm going to mark it all the way around and cut around it. 
So we've got our aperture and our focal length. Now we need a screen to project our image onto. In a camera obscura, the screens were usually the walls in the dark room that the image was projected onto. In cameras, this was later replaced with photographic film so that people could keep their pictures. And nowadays, instead of screens, we have pixels so that we can keep our pictures digitally. For our screen, I'm going to use some baking paper just here. If you've got white baking paper, that's great. I only have brown baking paper, so I'm gonna have a sepia style tint to all of my images. So now what we need to do is take the smaller end of our tube that we cut up and over one end, we're going to put our aperture, our pinhole. Try and make sure that the pinhole is in the center of the tube. You can either eyeball this or like me, you can get out the ruler and pen and try and make sure it's at the center. Around the other end, we are going to put our screen. We're going to use our baking paper. We're going to trace out the circle and I'm even gonna add some tabs onto the circle to secure it around the edge of the tube. Now it's time to put it all back together. We're going to take our shorter end of our tube and our longer end of our tube and reattach them, making sure that we've got our aperture, our pinhole on the outside end our screen, our baking paper, sandwiched in between, and an open end on the other end. We're not done there though, because by taking it apart and putting it back together, we've probably left some gaps in it, letting light come in from the outside into our camera. We want to make sure that the only light getting in is the light through the aperture, the pinhole. So to fix this, we're going to wrap the entire thing in some tin foil. This will reflect any light trying to come in from the outside away and keep in any lights already inside. If you want an extra step, you can take some black card or even colour in some card black like I've done. You can roll it up and pop it into the open end to create an eyepiece. And this will absorb any extra light near your eye, making your image even clearer. So there we have it, we have our pinhole camera. It doesn't look much like a camera, but it will work. To use it, we want to get our eye really into the eyepiece to make sure no extra light comes in and point it towards a bright object, maybe like a window, or if you have a lamp, light something up with it in a dark room. If your image is a bit blurry, try moving your camera closer and further away from the object until it's sharp. This is called focusing at the camera. Do you notice how your image is upside down? In cameras, this can be corrected for by using mirrors, Usually nowadays it's digitally corrected for, and our brain has to do the same thing with our eyes. It has to turn the images up the right way for us. If you move the camera one way, which way does the image move? What do you think would happen if we changed other things like the focal length and the aperture size? If you've got enough resources left over, give it a go and let us know. Thank you so much for joining us at GSC at Home today. If you made a pinhole camera, send a picture to us. We would love to see them. If you've got any questions, please comment down below and we'll see you tomorrow again at 10 a.m.